stumbled across this uh, news article. I don't even know if you want to call it news, an article, a posting from Barstool Sports. And it's about the, um, the wild, crazy world of Pat Burrell. Burrell was a uh, outfielder, a longtime outfielder slugger for the uh, Philadelphia Phillies. I believe he was on that 08. Um, actually, I'm positive he's on the 08 uh, World Series team. And then kind of that mini dynasty they had where they made the playoffs, back-to-back world championships, and a World Series to boot. <clears throat> uh, I did not know. Were any of you – uh, Prevy to this that he was he was as these stories will depict. I had no idea. Now I knew some of the old timers had stories like this, but I didn't know anybody from the quote unquote modern era had any kind of. Uh, and it's because it's harder to get away with. Like you know, I mean, even like Derek Jeter had like the uh, the shut your face claws in like every chick he ever took up to a New York apartment. So right. yeah, I just feel like it's harder to get away with this stuff, and apparently. Uh, there are some stories collected that nobody's ever heard. So, uh, so what they has is behind the bats, 10 tall tales. We're going to read these off. We're going to kind of give a fact fiction or embellished, and then maybe just kind of a brief, uh, what the hell do we think about what do we, what we just read? So starting off, I'm going to start, Alan, you're going to follow number 10, Pat, the bats post game move, uh, heard this story third hand from an old roommate. The girl he knows is out in Old City at an O-L-D-E. I'm not sure where that is. I'm assuming it's a, a suburb of Philly. One night and realizes she's within a few feet of the bat. So she approaches him, and after seconds of courting, they end up back at her place. I don't know any sex details, but they finish the deed. He gets up, puts on his clothes, and walks to the door to leave. She is curious why he's so fast to leave. Pat tells her, quote, I'm heading, I'm heading back out, but don't worry. Turns around. Uh, single pistol, uh, single pistol w- eye wink. Uh, you just got fucked by Pat Burrell. <clears throat> Sorry, I stumbled over the single eye pistol wink. That's like a like a bail. <laughs> um, fact, fiction, or embellished? Uh, probably fiction. Do you think fiction? It just sounds made up. Mm. It sounds too like like nobody tried. No, I feel like it's so stupid that it's real because I, I just okay somebody of that, that caliber uh obviously fool themselves the saying his first rodeo and just for him to part of me thinks that somebody like that would like want to piss off that chick so much that she doesn't come following him like you just got fucked by pat for real <laughs> you know like like don't come after me because i'm going to go bang somebody else now like don't follow me around i want you to stay in this stupid bed and forget my name but remember who just banged the shit out of you so <clears throat> having read this list before uh only once before prior to this i think this is fiction because i think some of the other stories we're about to read are fact and this is one that just got tagged on like <laughs> he probably did that he probably did that so i'm calling yeah. fiction but hell of a story i'm gonna start pistol eye winking people every now and then maybe if even give it like a little <laughs> now don't don't make the noise just uh no make the that's like right. the, the gun cock sound. Yeah. There you go. Nice. All right. So number nine. Mm-hmm. Number nine is uh, Pat the Bat at the bar. So yeah, the story goes, during the early years of his career, career Burl was spotted having a, a fun night with friends at 32 degrees in Old City. I see a pattern with the Old City. <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what Old City is, but I see a pattern. So... Pat, dressed in an awesomely homoerotic fishnet t-shirt with a gold chain around his neck, went up to the bar to order a round of Bud Lights. After receiving a tray with about 10 bottles scattered about, the babe proceeded to walk away. The bartender catches Pat's attention by yelling, hey man, you have to pay for those beers. The bat stops, slowly turns around and said, do you know who I am? The barkeep, confused by the question, replied, yeah, you're Pat Burl. Burl instantly responds back with force, you are correct. I am Pat Burrell and proceeds to walk away back to his table without paying for his drinks. <laughs> now that sounds absolutely true. Wait, wait, the only thing is, it would have been better if he just turned around, gave the old finger gun. You just got yeah. fucked by Pat Burrell. <laughs> yeah. <For> everything. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> I'm more concerned with the factor. I think the story's fact, but I wonder if the fishnet shirt is fact or fiction. I mean, I did, did. Was this guy? Was this guy that big of a douche? I know he was very full of himself, but the fishnet. I feel like yeah, that's probably that's probably true. That's true. Okay. So the whole story's true. 
well, I'm basing this being true based on the last story being true. And if he's that much of a douche twat, then yes, he would go out. To, if he's that full of himself, where he's referring to himself in the third person with apparently everyone he speaks to, then that's the type of dude that would wear a, a fishnet top to the bar to fuck a bartender out of his money when he's making millions of dollars a year to play baseball. Yeah. Yep. And how many, what, 10, 10 Bud Lights? By the way, Old Town is a neighborhood outside, or in Philly, so I, I, not far-fetched here. Context clues. Okay. Uh, number eight, Pat the Bat Ditching the Bait. Uh, <clears throat> I saw that uh, Pat – I just saw all the Pat Burrell stories and had to share this one. I heard it years ago from one of the older guys in my neighborhood. They went, uh, they went out downtown at the same bar as the Pat. <clears throat> I think that meant that this was supposed to be the Bat – uh, they sent him over a few drinks, eventually started bullshitting with him at the bar. While they were talking, a girl kept trying to get his attention, and Pat became annoyed very quickly. Pat eventually had enough, turns to the girl and says, let's take a walk. He walks the girl out through the front door, front revolving doors. Without stopping, uh, he leaves her on the <laughs> sidewalk and revolves right around back into the bar as if it never happened. That's good. So he just whoop, pulled, a, uh, pulled a 360 and uh, got the fuck out of there and, and chucked her out. I, that, I mean, whew, that, that's, that might be my favorite on this list. I'm calling facts on that. That's pretty good. Yeah, I would say that's true. I would, I would do that. That's funny. <laughs> I'm calling fact on that because I've done something similar in my past. Uh, we had a, you know old radio show day. Uh, we had a guest on. Was very enamored by the fact that he was on the radio. It's just like a local business owner who we had to come in and do like a 10-minute spot with. And he just chat, 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 chat. I was like, cool, man. Listen, I'm going to go outside and smoke a cigarette. And then as soon as I walked outside through the door, I was like, all right, I got to get back on, man. And I just closed the building door and went <laughs> right back inside. And that was his cue to get the fuck out of Dodge. So I can totally see somebody with this much, um, I don't know, ego pulling that off and just, I mean, the chick could have come back in, but she obviously got the message. Right. From Pat the Bat. That's, yeah. I mean, that, does that, that only works for a celebrity or some sort of like you know, town celeb. Or, or sports figure right i mean if you're not concerned about blowback then yeah that's that's a pretty good pretty good move i mean we we i mean we could physically we could do that move but then the girl just falls us back in and pisses and moans to us bitches us about what we just did where are we supposed to go right we don't we don't get the the, the scot-free uh the notion like he did exactly yeah all right, all right what was uh what are we on seven yeah yeah, seven. So, uh, Pat Bat washing up. <laughs> uh, this one's funny. Uh, at the Continental in Center City, I walked into the bathroom to find Pat Burrell at the sink washing his dick. We called eyes and he stayed, <laughs> had a run in with a broad in the stall. Gotta stay fresh. We then shook hands. <laughs> uh, that seems reasonable. That's got to be tall, too, to, like, you know, to be able to write, write in the sink. Yeah. Well, I mean, he's a professional athlete. Yeah, I think I think this is uh, this is coming firsthand. You know what I mean? This guy's this guy's telling the story. This is what happened to me. So therefore, I think it's true. Uh, if that's the case, boy, that is got to stay fresh. That is fucking uh, equal parts douche, equal parts uh, kind of epic. I don't even know what's the word that I'm searching for. Uh, legendary. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Well, the, see, the problem is, and this is the problem with these stories of me saying that they're all true, is I – because one, one of my former co-hosts was very much like this. He was not a professional athlete. He thought he was. He thought he was king, king of the world because of what we did for a living at the time. And he was exactly like this. Had zero shame, pure ego, uh, just no guilt about anything – no apologies and i he liked to show his dick off and you know what <clears throat> considering what he was packing probably worth showing off if you had it in your pants did he so, uh, did he wrestle in high school just by out of curiosity no this is the same guy that could throw a, a football with like no warm up like 75 yards you yeah. know like <laughs> the guy who could uh who could hit the green uh, with a driver on a par four, you know, like that guy, that guy that could, that could crush like a 18 pack of Coors Light and then still go out party. And that was his warm up. Right. Like nothing could phase him. And that sounds a lot like 
the this reason I right here. The reason I ask is rest, uh, not pro wrestlers, but amateur wrestlers or high school wrestlers uh, typically have no issue uh, with nudity in, in, in big, big group settings. Well, yeah, and if you're packing a Louisville slugger, you probably have no issue with it either. <laughs> Number six, uh, Pat the Bat and Sloppy Seconds. <clears throat> so, Bass, oh. uh, so basically, Pat used to date Heather Mitts, who is now married to A.J. Feely. Uh, A.J. Feely was a backup quarterback for McNabb during that era. Whether or not they are, they are still married, I don't know. <clears throat> uh, when they were in Philly, uh, Feely saw Pat at the bar and went up to him and praised his career in the Phils. Uh, Pat started off as uh, cordial, giving him the same BS uh, back about the Eagles. But before he walked away, uh, he left him with this, quote, one more question. How's my dick taste? What a legend. Oh, That's a dick move. That's a dick. I hope it's true because then that solidifies his dick status. Uh, this could go either way. <sighs> this could go either way, and this is actually the one that I believe the least. Because yeah. I, I could see him saying it, but in this instance, I feel like it would be like kind of like a jokey kind of very douchebag joke, but like, <laughs> hey, real quick, how's my dick taste? <laughs> and then he yeah. slaps his own knee. Nobody else laughs. I wonder, and I also wonder if, if um, if it if, if if this wasn't the joke, but something was made as a joking context of I used to date her. Feely already knew it. They're kind of friends. Ha 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 ha. But maybe I don't know the way the story is portrayed is that. Like, Patch is kind of like uh, uh, just being cordial. We're both uh, we're both Philly athletes. Ha <laughs> Get the fuck away from me. How's my dick taste? Yeah, I mean, he doesn't seem like the most stand up gentleman that I've ever uh, come across in any particular story. So, I, I I won't say it didn't happen. It just seems it just seems random. It seems too random to be true for him to like blurt it out out of nowhere. Unless there's more context to the story that we're not getting here. Seems rancid. All right.